Hey guys, we're gonna do a little experiment today with this solar package. And the intention of this is uh, to kind of show you how these are going, how the solar package on this acts as a battery maintainer, which can extend the lifespan of your batteries greatly instead of letting them drain down. So this is one of my battery boxes I use for recording. Right now we have 11.9 volts on it. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna hook this up and I have another RV to record in the meantime. Now, again, I'm intending to do this as a storage test. I'm gonna have the lights off, the fridge off, all that stuff. And I'm gonna come back in, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, however long it takes me to record that next trailer. And we'll see what we get off this thing. I'm curious to find out myself. About 45 minutes later. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, I think we got good results. 14.2 volts, 14.1 or two there. Charging up from 11.9 to 14.2 in about 45 minutes. This is a very effective charging package. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with what I named uh, tied for the best new floor plan to come out in fifth wheels for 2021, the Rockwood 2442 BS. This thing, it is so different, so original. It is so cool and that is what I love about it. I love, I see the same things all day, every day and I get so boring. Uh, bored seeing this. Yeah, I get bored. Well, maybe I get boring. I don't know. Maybe you tune out watching me. Maybe you should watch this video at like two times speed to get through it quicker. I don't know. But I, whenever I see somebody reinvents the wheel and I, I'm just like, yes, yes, Rockwood. They came up with something. It's, it's not even under 30 feet. It's less than 29 feet tip to tail. This is 28 feet, 11 inches tip to tail. Um, it, they found a way to put a full bed slide in this thing, queen or king sized. Uh, automatic leveling and all the high level fit and finish that you expect out of Rockwood. They just nail this thing here. Um, you, you could really equip this if you're uh, looking for some serious boondock off gridden. This is something that could really, really work well for you because the small size makes it easy to tote around. And the fact that you can put a very robust solar package on this and you have your choice between a 12 volt or a two way fridge. So if you really want to go off grid, that two way fridge might be really like that energy sipping method for you here factory inverter to be able to run some of the uh the outlets i mean this is this thing is awesome we've got factory tpms goodyear tires all those equipment things you expect but a layout that is just so wacky and wild and cool it's a small living room but especially with the light color package we put in this it doesn't feel like that at all now if this is your first time seeing this one uh, leave me your comments and let me know what you think about this. I absolutely love this floor plan. I will, I will point out that it, it has some weird quirky kind of things about it. Uh, kind of like me. Maybe that's why I like it so much. I really resonate with this thing, but this is, this is one of my personal favorites right here. And I think if you give it a chance, you'll see why. Now, again, I will fully acknowledge this floor plan is not for everybody. This is really set up, especially as we see it here as a purist solo or couples kind of rig uh you could sub in a hide -a bed in place of that little cuddlicious theater seat right there but um for the most part it's definitely made for just you or just you and me for dining we do have that little elevated kind of breakfast bar right there we'll come take another look at that um, but you could always also get like a little free floating folding leg table or some uh, some TV trays. Frankly, TV trays, I think, are a very underrated feature in the RV industry. You don't hear people talk about them a lot. And it's not super obvious in this floor plan, but something Rockwood did for 22, they are actually rolling this through their entire lineup model by model. So it's kind of a rolling 22 change, getting rid of the carpet in that slide flooring. A lot of people asked for it. They said, you got it. Now, this is a small space, so I really wanted to pair this up. Uh, I, I felt it best appropriate with their lightest interior decor package. We're looking at the Newport Ash with the stone decor. If this isn't your thing, though, they have a very rich, luscious thing called Autumn Wood now that replaced Slate Wood. It has like a, a warm, rich luster to it. It's darker brown. Um, uh, we, we've had RVs in stock with that and, and videoed at Halid RV here on our channel. So if you haven't found one, uh, give us a shout and we will, uh, I'll shoot you a link to it so you can check something like that out. And I'd really like to know, like, as we go through this video, let me know with the different options how you would want yours equipped. What are the different things that you want out of yours? Now, the TV is definitely going to be high for some people. I, I like to be fair. I like to point out the good with the bad. I get that it doesn't have a full-time dinette, 
I get that it doesn't have amazing guest sleeping uh, capacity, but things I do love, there is a full shade in that entry door, which is one of the simplest things and frankly super frustrating to me that more brands don't go ahead and do that. Because if you ask, like 10 people out of 10 would definitely prefer it there. And almost everyone's like, yeah, I'd pay the extra 65 bucks or whatever for that, no big deal. Now, one of the concerns people have sometimes with this entertainment center is how it can kind of interfere with that little dining situation. So rather than try to downplay it, I'm just gonna show you and I'll let you form your own opinions. Kinda. I feel like I'm a little boy with my feet dangling, even though my long legs still touch the floor. More to the point, what kind of room do we have here? Now, I'm, I'm tall, I'm about 6'3". I'm not a real blocky dude, but my shoulder is touching this right here. I'm just under it. It is nice that this kind of comes at neck level though, so I'm not getting, you know, whacked in the larynx or carotid artery or something over here. And I mean, if I'm really laughing and having fun with my friends, I could knock my head on that. But I've got this chair all the way against the sidewall. I think a little more realistically, if I can get my fat butt up, you'd be over here just a little bit. And when you're doing that, everything kind of works out. So what about this other chair? If I leave this one here and jump over here, you can see it still pretty much works. Now, I am admittedly off the edge of the counter a little bit, but it's a corner of a counter. If you want to kind of angle the chair a little bit, you want to sit here and be social, you want to look up the TV chat with the people over there, it works. And I get that this is not for everybody, but this is made with a specific kind of person in mind. Uh, like I said, a, a solo individual looking for a very nice place instead of like a, a little 21 foot ultra light, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you're like, I want to travel. I want to see the country. I want to run around this thing. Or you're working and your work requires you to travel and you're on your own. Oh my Lord, this would be such an awesome, like rolling luxury suite. Uh, or if there's just two of you, it, you know, however, if you want to do the theater seat, the high to bed, whatever works for you, I, I would imagine there's some kind of dinette option you could put over there. Although to me, this really just screams sofa model. Um, it works. It works enough for me, but that's my opinion. It's your money. I want you to form your own opinions. I just want to take the extra time and effort to really show how everything in this uh, fits together. Now, at a glance, you see a small RV and you start thinking, hmm, that's going to have really limited storage, right? Rockwood flipping nailed it, and I am going to dissect this kitchen piece by piece so that you get to see it. Now, as long as we were focused on the entertainment center, I figured I'd start there to give you a point of reference. The TV does pivot out. So if you're over here, you're doing like the campsite cook thing, you're doing some prep work, somebody's outside or whatever, you don't have to really crane your neck around. Like, this almost feels like overkill. I don't think they had to do this, and it would still be just fine. But... That's Rockwood for you, baby. They're always doing a little bit more. Now, down below these solid surface countertops, you see a larger 22-inch oven. And, baby, they put drawers down to the floor. Plywood drawers everywhere they could. I, I suppose they theoretically probably could, uh, could have put a larger drawer up there where there's that little sponge drawer. If I'm being ultra picky, that is one of the only things in this RV as a whole that I'm, I don't really love, but <laughs> I can deal with it. And then over here under the sink. They actually include a wastebasket for us, which is nice. And it's not small. It's just a giant compartment. It actually goes way around the corner back there. Some of that, I, I think, could be hard to reach. So maybe something like a Lazy Susan back there or things that you're not going to get to every single day. Now, both of those windows do open for airflow. They are frameless, crank-open, jowlessy style windows. And it actually looks kind of goofy. You're like, what do you mean? This, this window cranks open. There's a ladder right behind it. One of the hiccups with these is they don't open very far, but thankfully uh, there's plenty of other windows in this for cross breeze, especially around the seating area. And the big XL vent fan in the bathroom can actually help even here in the living room uh, sort of compensate for that. Now up top, same thing. Uh, that is a larger microwave, by the way. Most RV microwaves are 0.9 cubic feet. That is 1.3. What that means is like a real American sized dinner plate can actually fit into that thing storage above the refrigerator here again there's 12 volt or gas electric refrigerators we're looking at the 12 volt today it is larger it is faster cooling and it just it just feels right in this one to me you know <sighs> but rockwood uh i like to call rockwood the plus one of rv builders this theater seat they use is like a it's a plus five level up kind of theater seat right here so it's a wall hugger. I've got it reclined on the, or, well, I've got it uh, inclined and reclined on the left. I have it just inclined on the right. 
You see how it was a little um, cuddly theater seat, but you've got a giant drop-down console. You've got storage in both of the armrests if you want it, which is something I think is just very, very cool on these. And um, just to give you an idea, I'll just toss my phone down there so you can see that thing <laughs> goes pretty deep. Uh, somebody text me, remind me not to leave my phone in there. Thanks. That's probably not going to work since my phone's in there, but you know, whatever. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> uh, all of these windows open for airflow, but notice how they all have the nice roller blackout shades. That's something that was optional on these last year, and they just said, you know what? We're just going to make our RVs better by streamlining things and basically getting rid of options and just standardizing more and more stuff. Um, there's power outlets in the theater seat. That little, uh, let me, why am I talking about it? It's right here. I can just show you, right? You see that little flip up job right there? Household outlets and dual USB plugs. That's great for your phones all the time and stuff. But right over here, you've got like a little kind of, a, you know, welcome home coffee bar. And that outlet there is one of several outlets in this RV that is actually wired to the inverter. So if you want to, uh, uh, you know, do a little off-grid camping, your battery can keep some of that stuff uh, alive for you. And, I mean, these windows aren't even getting direct sunlight right now. You see how the light pollution pouring in through these big suckers actually kind of affects the coloring of everything over here. I love... Okay, I always screw this up. It's not called, it's not beveled glass. It's got those vertical grooves. What is the name of that? Why do I never remember the name of that? Why do I suck at that? This is one of the only floor plans they make that can't have an optional fireplace. Would you be willing, you see those two tall doors that we just looked at? Would you be willing to sacrifice something like those for a fireplace? I don't even know if one would fit, but that's like the only logical place I can think to put one uh in here otherwise they're just i don't know i don't know there's a lot of other opportunities now uh moving up front here moving on up i like the built-in handrail to get us upstairs i also really like this is stuff that montana does the little magnet holdbacks for the bedroom door right there it's just one less thing you got to deal with uh and that'll actually come in pretty handy when it comes to going up and down these stairs uh to get to the bathroom but uh more on that in just a second uh it's really cool that Rockwood just has light switches, but if you want to, you can get the We RV app, which is basically an, another name specific to Rockwood for the LCI One control system, and virtually anything that's on this, like slides, awnings, lights, whatever, you can control all that stuff right off your phone. Now, there's one other little hiccup glitchy area in this RV, uh, well, two, but this is the next one we're going to encounter. It has to have a swinging door. So if you're coming from the bedroom, you have to come out, kind of go downstairs, open the door, and then come in and go around. I don't love that, but there's not enough room here for a sliding pocket privacy door. I just kind of want to point that out. Now with that skylight going on here in the bathroom, I don't even have lights on and it's nice and light and bright in here. The only kind of hiccup with this bathroom is there's not a lot of really good angles for me to get at. So I think I'm going to do to this what I did to the kitchen. I figure we will go through this thing piece by bloody piece, basically. I Notice how the wall uh, wallpaper changes in here? I don't know about you. I know that in most houses that I see, the bathroom decor doesn't exactly match everything. It's certainly within the same color palette. It's a very soft shift, but it's nice. That is a big stainless sink. And notice how that extra kick out of counter space there is very, very nice. I think what I would do over here is I would maybe um, get one of those standing toilet paper holder kind of rolls. Because other than that, I think actually mounting the toilet paper holder on the door itself, the actual bathroom door, is the only other place I could think to, to maybe put something like that. You see you got the shower miser right there, a little water saver system. If you're boondocking, it means that you don't waste any of that precious fesh, uh, fesh, yeah, fesh, oh my lord, I can't say it, fresh water down the drain. There we go. And... If you noticed, look at the curvature of the ceiling against that wall. This is a barrel vaulted ceiling. It's one of the things that helps the living room even feel open, but it's very impactful in the upper deck. And where I loved it, look at my goofy grinning face standing in that shower, man. All the headroom I could ever need in there. Now, um, up top here, you can see you've got that uh, big XL vent fan. That is actually rain sensoring as well, which is very nice. To our left, if I step back into the bathroom, Every little corner, every nook and cranny, they could do something they did. 
And if you're a little more gravity friendly, not as tall as me, you don't have to reach all the way up there to activate that fan. You could use this as a wall switch, but frankly, it's a remote control. I mean, it just it's it's overkill. It's almost silly, silly overkill. And I, I, back to a previous conversation on the pocket door, I know this wall looks thick enough. Remember, you have control panel right on the other side. There's all sorts of wiring and stuff inside of here. Now, um, I am all up on top of this uh, toilet. So apologies, this is not like the, the best angle. But actually, it is sort of showcasing the fact if you're a right-handed butt napkin user, it is limited on space in there. And uh, the storage over here, this is excellent. And it, 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 the bathroom feels like one of those 35 foot fifth wheels, but they, again, they somehow managed to squeeze this thing down into like 29 foot total. It's awesome. And then finally, all the way up the stairs into the bedroom. I love, uh, like, we're, we're in the bed. This is like, if you're laying in bed, you see the end of the bed down there. This is what you're going to see either in the morning or at night. Beautiful space there. If you choose to add a TV, perfect little spot for it. But I like how it, you don't have to choose between Windows or a television. You can get Windows and a television. Um, one of the other things I want to mention here, this is 50 amp. You can put a second air on it. And actually, that is something we do most of the time. This is one of the few that came in where we haven't done that more of a Midwestern build, but it's always prepped and ready for a second air. We can always slap another one on for you uh, if that's what you're looking for. Those windows, by the way, have the same blackout roller shades as everything else. They're very consistent about that through the RV, uh, with the exception of the kitchen, which is like the only place where they can't do that. Um, you, you see over here, household USB plugs. You can make that a nice little phone charge station or a, plate, a great little spot for like a, a, a fan or anything like that. And in terms of storage, it's just like the living room or, or, or the kitchen. They put so much thought and emphasis and creativity in packing just incredible storage into this thing. It's just it's just shocking that they, they found a way to put as much in this as they did. Now, one major point I want to point out here is uh, this bedroom, that front closet, this is not washer dryer capable. It is too small. Because they were going for a specific length uh, requirement that, you know, their own target build, 29 feet or less, there is not room in there for a washer dryer unit. There's not hookups. Could you maybe theoretically uh, reconfigure this and fit one in and, and run your own stuff? Maybe after market, but nothing available like that from the factory. This is one of the few floor plans with a bed slide where they don't do that. If you're that being said, one of my other favorites that does offer it is the $28.99. I've got video of that on our channel. Look up $28.99 KS. And uh, it is it is a beast. It's one of my... It, again, it's weird. It's different. It's why I like it. And I'm shocked. That they went with a nice deep bed slide here. Notice the little side stands with the household outlets. Those, again, wired to be uh, inverter ready. And what we're looking at here is the standard 60 by 80 queen. We have a lot of people asking us, leave a queen and stuff instead of always going to a king. But the fact is, if you wanted to go to a king, this one is capable of doing so, whether aftermarket or from the factory. And the road mode travel access function on this one, it's kind of a, uh, a love-hate sort of thing for me. Um, like, I love the total size of the RV. I love the fact that it's, it's very easy. Actually, you can navigate through pretty much the whole rig uh, with the slide closed. Now, um, I'm showing this in full traveling mode. Like, I, I've, you know, engaged the travel locks on the shower slide doors and everything. Just to try to really give you the full view. Like, I put the buckle straps back on the chairs and close the slides and all that stuff over here. So, this qualifies very easily for the very prestigious, mind you, designation of nap and crap accessibility uh, upstairs. And at a glance, you get down here and you're like, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I see I can move through pretty much the whole kitchen. The only hang up with this floor plan, really, is just that you basically lose the refrigerator with the slide closed. It does everything else so well. It is just like it's the one hiccup with this model. Now, if that's not a uh, that's not a big factor for you. Awesome. We got the right rig. However, they make a sister to this that does have like full kitchen access and transit in the same size. It's called the 2445 WS Rockwood. Um, very, it's almost the exact same size. Basically, they steal from the bedroom a little bit. It'll drop down to just a closet slide, but it will give you a full dinette downstairs instead of the uh, the, the bar, basically. And you will retain uh, refrigerator access with the slide closed. So they're, 
they each do a couple things the other one doesn't, but there's only so much room to play with. So they kind of just built two versions, in a sense, of the same floor plan, and I'm just really glad that we have them both for you here at uh, Halo RV. And I mean, I know it's subjective, but tell me, that does not look phenomenal. Against that beautiful deep blue sky, a little bit of the, the Michigan leaves color turning in the background there, tell me this just doesn't look amazing. It's what I call a Kathleen head turner. Now this is actually one of two different ways you can dress this one up. We've got it uh, paired up with the um, optional white skin exterior package which adds those graphite accents and little kind of orange pop little zing up there for you just to put a little color into it. Um, but uh, the standard default package on this is actually a little more classic champagne with like a chocolate deep accent to it, which also looks very good. We have so many people requesting this though. This is definitely what we stock the most of. Although if you scan back through our videos in the previous season, you'll see that we, you know, we're not opposed to bringing this in both ways. This is our general stocking loadout here though with those uh, protective slide awning covers. Um, and uh, these, uh, we also option on the automatic leveling on these. And, even though this is small, a lot of smaller fifth wheels, some people leave that off. It's a Rockwood, man. That's the thing, like, this is a Rockwood Ultra. There's actually a higher level version of a Rockwood called a Signature still. They don't make this floor plan. They have different layouts. But um, it, it always feels a step above. Like, if you look at a Rockwood Ultra, it feels like it compares better against whatever the next guy's next step up is because they're just so good, so detailed. Like, you got your, uh, you know, protected enclosed docking center here, and you can see how it basically has a, a little built-in outside shower. But Rockwood doing Rockwood things, although I did a very poor job of displaying it here. Like, they'll, they'll do things like include... Um... <laughs> Live from New York, it's Saturday night. Let's let's try this again. They'll do things like include the uh, I am not left-handed. Come on. Oh, <laughs> hey, we got it. First try. Nailed it. Just, just the little details like that. I didn't intend to spend 23 minutes attempting to hook that up with my left hand, but, uh, you know, hey, here we are, guys. That's, uh, that's life, right? And look at the size of the pass-through on this thing. For a small fifth wheel, show me another fifth wheel this size, 28 feet 11 inches tip to tail with that kind of belly space. Now jumping back over here to the door side, I, I wanted to give you a better look over here at this corner where what you're seeing, the cylindrical thing with the pink Kool-Aid in it, that is the uh, like kitchen water filter system. So your drinking water can be filtered in this because campgrounds sometimes have kind of cruddy water. And the boxy thing right there is the uh, 1000 watt inverter that you can get, uh, it, it comes, with, when you get the 12 volt fridge, it comes with a 190 watt roof solar panel and the 1000 watt inverter. But remember, if you swap over to the gas electric two way fridge, uh, the, the solar package is not actually standard on these. It's just included automatically with the 12 volt fridge. So if you get the uh, two way fridge, you'll want to probably, I'm assuming, re-add the solar and inverter package. And there's even allowances, you can get a second roof solar panel. And there's a plug on the front of this thing by that open baggage door, where you can use a side portable solar panel. So like I said, you can build a very robust off-grid package with one of these things here. Um, now this floor plane literally would not be possible if it weren't for those more ride stable steps right there because the way they drop down over those Goodyear Endurance radials. Because as you can imagine, if for a traditional folding step system, there'd be, there, there's no room for a step well. And Rockwood made this easy. Like whether you do or don't have like, let's say a bad rotator cuff or something like that, Obviously, it's a self-supporting stable step like those luxury giant fifth wheels and toy haulers. Remember how I said everything on a Rockwood feels like it's plus one above anybody else in this size or category? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Rockwood does anything anyone else does plus one. That's that's like their, their game plan. It's really not any more complicated than that, you know? I had to slide in between a couple trailers here to give you a little look at the door side. And for a small fifth wheel... Tell me they didn't nail the patio awning space on this. Like that's a, they put the biggest awning on this thing I think they possibly could have. By the way, those Goodyear tires, um, not only are they 87 mile an hour rated, uh, but they also have factory standard tire pressure monitoring and something that's very cool, because again, Rockwood does and, they're using a torsion axle and suspension system here instead of a leaf spring. If you're not familiar with that, what that's basically going to mean is the tires will very much act like an independent suspension system. It's not technically, but it is very similar to that. 
and it will provide smoother ride and handling. And with the tires parked a little bit closer together, especially considering the shorter nature of this RV, if you need to really jackknife this sucker into a tight parking spot, you get far, far less tire scrub doing that. Now, even with wide stance axles or whatever, or leaf springs, I've never seen tire scrub blow a tire out. It just feels better. It feels like there's less stress going on with this, you know? Now on the back here, we've got a 300 pound rated accessory hitch. That is one of the only things if you're uh, like, especially with the shorter length of this, if you're thinking, man, I could throw a boat or something behind it. You will have to have some aftermarket fabricating done to bulk up the chassis in that area. And understand if you do that, you have thrown away the structural aspects of your warranty. So, you know, use the RV however you intend to, but I will make sure that you are properly educated so that you know the good, the bad with the ugly with everything in between when it comes to all that. Now, quick construction rundown for you here as we get up top on this thing. And man, it's nice seeing a lot full of inventory again. This summer was so weird coming into an empty lot every day. This feels so much better to me. Anyway, um, Construction on this one is very simple. It's all aluminum skeleton. The only thing in this that is not laminated is uh, just the floor. And the floor is built like a giant luxury fifth wheel uh, with a 5 8 tongue groove plywood floor decking on top of that uh, aluminum structure. And if you'd really like to learn a little bit more how these are put together, I'll leave you a link in the video description where we will, I actually took a trip down to Rockwood's facilities. I got to see four of their different, uh, four out of five of their production lines. And I got to actually see these things come together in person. You get to see them under the skin from the chassis up and you can learn so much more about it that way. But a uh, quick note again on the solar, remember, the 190 watt solar package with 1000 watt inverter comes with the 12 volt fridge. The two way fridge comes with nothing. You can re-add the solar and inverter and you can always option on a second panel if you're so inclined. Plus there's that portable prep panel. And let's hear it for the little Max Air vent fan cover that comes on every single Rockwood. They always have the bigger fan. They always have the nicer cover. You don't have to spend a couple bucks extra to do it. It's just, instead of prepping for stuff, they just, usually do stuff. I think the rear view camera on this is like one of the only times where they prep for something and don't actually pull the trigger. And considering all the other stuff they've done, yeah, I, I feel like I can look over that. <laughs> this thing is nice. I love this model. All right, you heard me, your turn. Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already left me a message, leave me one now and let me know what you think about it. Hit the like button on our video. And if you appreciate the way I show you the good with the bad, hit that subscribe button. We will always give you fair information to the best of our ability here at our family owned and operated place. We don't do in dealer fees. We just try to do straight facts. And we help you try to get your second camper the first time around. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Mm -hmm.